Power box for the cassettes. All right, we've seen those before, so nothing new. Yeah. General formula. I R C double bond to an O. O H. Name of the functional group is carbo carboxyl. Is the name of the functional group. Ah, why is it doing that? As soon as I put my pen here, let's just go like that. That should stop it from moving. Stop. <laughs> Car. Right. Carboxyl is the name of the functional group. In terms of naming the structure, right, is anoic acid. So anoic acid, something anoic acid, right? Always will come on a terminating carbon. Carboxylic acids have the number one in terms of uh, functional group preferences. Yeah. Example following along that same trend that I've been doing. The example of yeah. Right. Right. Butanoic acid as my example. Intermolecular forces. What do we think? Intermolecular forces. Yeah, hydrogen bonding. Absolutely. Right. Oxygen attached to a hydrogen. Hydrogen bonding can occur. And of course, dispersion as well. Ah, why is my pen not working today? Um, and just an extra note about carboxylic acids. They have the strongest of the intermolecular forces of the functional groups. And that's because Okay. So if I've got two functional groups here. Okay. So they can align themselves like this. So it's multiple hydrogen bonds can occur. And form these structures which are called dimers. D-I-M-E-R-S. Really strong structure. So, what does that tell us about in terms of boiling point, right? For similar length hydrocarbon chains, carboxylic acids will have the highest of the boiling points yeah, in our trends. Polarity, yes, it's polar, very polar, in fact, solubility, it's very soluble, right? Typical reactions um, undergoes condensation reactions. Yeah, condensation reaction with amines or with alcohols to then form amides or esters. Yeah. So both esters or esterification and amides, right, are types of, are subsets of condensation reactions. A amidification? I don't know. I don't think there is a term. They're just condensation reactions. Yeah. Yeah. It's called a dimer. Yeah. Where it's just how they stack. It's like I've got one carboxylic acid sort of inverts, and we can see I've got those multiple hydrogen bonds that can form. Uh, just that they can form. Yeah. So if you're given a question that says something like, compare, uh, like uh, give a comparison of the boiling points and examples between the bonding of ethanol versus ethanoic acid and explain why. 
and you would say both, so similarities, comparing, similarities is that both ethanol and ethanoic acid form hydrogen bonds between molecules. The strength of the hydrogen bond in ethanoic acid is stronger because of the ability, because of multiple hydrogen bonds can form, yeah, and can form a dimer structure. Amides. Amide and esters are similar. Right, we're only look, going to look at primary amides. So it's like an amine attached to a, a, a carbonyl carbon. Don't really need to know about naming. Don't have to name amides. Yeah, so notice how the difference between carboxylic acids and amides is instead of this OH here, I've got NH2. And I'll just do... And it's got the suffix amide. Yeah? I'll do a simpler example because I won't be able to fit it otherwise. No, not in... NH2, so this would be called ethan amide. Yes, you may have heard of niacin. Who's heard of niacin before? Right? It also has the name nicotinamide. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it is similar in structure to nicotine. Nicotine itself can actually act... Well, not, not as the vitamin, but nicotine can act as a antidepressant. Right? Because nicotine, we're talking about structure, binds to acetylcholine receptors within the brain, right? That helps in terms of antidepressant behavior. And uh, improves alertness, right? It's a stimulant drug. Right, we've got a nitrogen attached to hydrogen, so hydrogen bonding can also occur. And, of course, dispersion. So all of these have dispersion, right? So it's important just to distinguish if, if you're asked the question, what's the types of intermolecular forces between these compounds? State the main one and dispersion, right, in order to get the mark. Yes, it's polar. Yes, it's soluble in water. Um, I won't really go into reactions of amides, right, because amide is the product of a condensation reaction between a carboxylic acid and an amine. Yeah? <laughs> In terms of boiling point, it would have a lower, still, still hydrogen bonding, right? But it has a lower boiling point than the carboxylic acid equivalent. And that's because the nitrogen only has a single lone pair. This oxygen up here has two, right? So we're reducing the uh, amount of hydrogen bondings able to be formed. Esters. Uh, C double bond O, O and R. So we've got that two in between. Right, and our general notes, remember, if I split this in two, this comes from the carboxyl portion. This comes from... Oh, I hate. And this comes from the hydroxyl component. In terms of our naming... Right, we take the hydroxyl or the alcohol portion first, and it becomes something all from the alcohol. So if it's if it's methanol, there will be methyl, right? And from the carboxyl portion, the carboxylic acid, 
goes from anoic acid and then the name becomes anoate. Yeah, so I'll just do a simple example. Um, OCH3, squeeze that in there. This would be called methyl ethan O8. Types of bonding, what do you think? Have a guess. Dipole, dipole. Why is it not hydrogen? Exactly, right? There's no hydrogen attached to the oxygen, so it's dipole, dipole only. Yeah, and dispersion. Yeah, we don't really f refer to them as London dispersion forces in, in VCE, so just dispersion is sufficient. Yeah? They're polar. They're slightly soluble in water. Yeah? And we can think, based off their bonding, you could position them in terms of their relative solubility and their relative boiling points compared to similar size molecules. Yeah? So carboxylic acid will have the highest boiling point and the highest level of solubility because it's the most polar, followed by amides. Then your um, alcohols will come next, and then your esters and your haloalkanes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so look for where the double bond is, split it in half. Where the single bond oxygen is, is going to be the alkyl or the, the ul part, and the O8 part will be where the double bond O is. So it's important that if you're ever asked to name an ester, be mindful of the orientation in which the ester is drawn. Yeah, because the C double bond O could be on the right hand side or it could be on the left hand side as it is drawn yeah so don't think about going from left to right ever in terms of naming structures identify the c double bond o that becomes the o8 part and the other part is the ul part um in terms of reactions as we know with with esters, right? Methyl fatty esters, we've seen those before, way back in the start of Unit 3. They undergo hydrolysis, yeah? Undergo hydrolysis back to the alcohol and the carboxyl portion. Okay, lastly, let's talk about alcohol. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually add an extra page. So you can add it to notes or flip over the page to talk about alcohols because this, but we'll, we'll talk about them in general and then I'll talk about the extra details. Alcohols have the second priority in terms of naming and in terms of strength of bonding. General formula writes R O H. Functional or name of the well functional group and name of the functional group is hydroxyl. In terms of naming, right, in most cases it will have the suffix ol, yeah, unless coupled with a, oh, I'm going to try and squeeze this in, with a carboxyl in which it has the prefix hydroxy. I don't know if you can fit that in or add that to your notes somewhere. So, so ethanol, right? So if we had the example, I'll just go down here and show you an example. So ethanoic acid, if I had an OH here, right, that would be called hydroxy ethanoic acid. Yeah, so if I've got a carboxylic acid, we use the prefix hydroxy. Example, right, butan-1-ol, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding, it's polar, it's soluble, 
um, undergoes lots of reactions. We know, obviously, pretty much all of them do combustion.